race fans, let's talk a little street stock action. Of course, didn't do a show this past week because of the 100. So let's touch a little bit on the week before. We'll touch on the 100s, and then we'll get to this week's power rankings. Let's start over at the River City Speedway up in Grand Forks, North Dakota. They had the John Sites Memorial. They had the Prelude to the Johnny, and then they had Keith One Day Features the next for the Sites Memorial. Night number one to the, at the Prelude, Parker Anderson. He held off Justin Vogel and just continues to put that 27 in victory lane. And then night two, I called this one. I said, he's going to be tough to beat up there. The Wolverine, Justin Vogel, he put the 10 in victory lane extremely fast. And uh, I, t- I tell you, though, lap traffic played a part. Ryan Johnson, a local up there who's very good at Grand Forks, was absolutely coming. Too little too late. Vogel, your winner at Grand Forks. The Gondic Law Speedway, they had street stocks. They only have them a couple times a year at most. But they had him on night one of the Northern Nationals. The D1, Dustin Dowdy, parked it in victory lane. What a family weekend for him because Swearing Jim won night number three for the Midwest Mods. So congratulations to the D1. KRA Speedway, a couple Thursdays ago, Wausau's Jeff Nowak. He made the trip over, a long ride over from Wausau all the way to KRA Speedway, but it paid off with a feature win. Black Hill Speedway, they had a doubleheader. Up in Rapid City, South Dakota, Troy Murner. He doubled up on the weekend, winning both nights of South Dakota's, I guess, the South Dakota Lottery Half Mile Nationals. That's a mouthful. So congratulations, Troy Murner. He parked in victory lane. That's several wins on the year for him. That's a guy we talked about a lot this year. Chateau Speedway down in Lansing. They had a doubleheader as well. Night number one, Zach Elward. He, uh, he stays hot. He's been really good. Ever since Brower quit going there, he has been flat out the guy to beat every single night. And t- night number two, the 15-year-old, Ty Hagen made the trip over. How about that? Parked it in victory lane. I believe he got second the night before from deep over in Jimtown. Speaking of that, let's talk about Jimtown. Danny Richards, the Jimtown showdown over at the Eagle Valley Speedway in Jim Falls, Wisconsin. He parked it, and uh, like I said, Ty Hagen, 13th to second it actually was. So another one of them younger kids out there, 15 years old, he can get her on the racetrack. Looking forward to some things uh, in 2022 for that kid. Now let's go to the Gallatin Speedway. They had the Big Sky Super Nationals out there in Belgrade. Corey Craver, he parked it in Victory Lane and got a chance to see him, and he just had rough luck over at the Wasota 100, but... The big three all did. They had a little bit of a tough luck, but they they all showed signs of speed, just not uh, the weekend they were looking for, but a hell of a year out west for Craver. Tri-County Speedway up in Wishak. They had the Sauerkraut Bay's doubleheader. Night number one, John Weber, his first win since 2019. And night two, Jody Michelson, his fourth of the year. And I wonder maybe if, uh, if we'll see Michelson possibly over at the Casino Speedway, hoping to see him here this weekend. Madison Speedway, this is probably one of the better races I've seen in a while. So uh, a week ago, I guess it would have been the Sunday before the Wasota 100. Mike Jans won a thriller. Him, Braden Brower, Kyle Dykoff, three absolute studs and street stocks were dicing and slicing, all three of them battling for the lead. And in the closing laps, Dykoff went off the top of turn number three, that ended his night. I mean, he came back on, but it was basically over. And then it was Brower in the lead and running smooth on the bottom. Mike Jans went a lane up, last lap pass for the win. Mike Jans looked really good in 25. <clears throat> so let's head over to the legendary 100. Of course, they had two prelim nights, and then they had the finale. Night number one, plenty of excitement. So they had actually in, in night number one, looking at this, Nick Trainer. Okay, he had the lead, looked like it was pretty much over, had the best car, and he spun out coming off of turn number two, collects Dustin Dowdy, looked like maybe he ripped the radiator out of Dowdy's car. His night was done, and and, uh, Hanson, Andrew Hanson, inherited the lead on that one. Horrible restart, pushed like a grader, a little bit of contact going on. Egan takes the lead on the bottom. Coomer goes around the top. Egan looks like he has a one. Cody Coomer, last lap pass for the win. Great race in that one. And then night number two, redemption for Nick Trainer. He parked it in victory lane in the prelim on night number two. 
and he never looked back because he won the finale. So he won Cody Coomer second, Travis Lowe, a teammate, of course, to Nick Trainer third in a good racing action over at the Cedar Lake Speedway. Now, <clears throat> let's talk with Soda 100 over at the I-94 Sure Step Speedway, night number one to your national champ, Steph is champ, you name it. Parker Anderson was the show. He got it done night number one. Jeff Nowak with a big win on night number two. He showed some speed lately. Looked really good when I saw him over in Wilmer. He looked good in Madison. He came from really deep up into the, I think he got third or fourth from deep in the field. And he looked really good there winning night number two. And then Johnny Carter showed up and he's been really fast as of late. Also, he showed up on Friday, was not there Wednesday and Thursday. Now, keep in mind, he had to make it in on Friday because he wouldn't have had enough accumulated points to even be in an LCQ on Saturday. Well, he did one better. He, uh, he snuck by Braden Brower, who Brower looked good, and I think he kind of snookered him a little bit there, got it done. Johnny Carter putting it on the front row. The race of champions from the guy that races up in Mandan at the Dakota Speedway, Hunter Damagala, a great showing for him, winning the race of champions. And then the A-Main, it was all Parker Anderson. Braden Brower was there. He was there. <clears throat> he was kind of stocking them. Just had a little bit of a tough time getting through the holes. It was pretty choppy out there for the street stocks. Looked like his stuff was maybe just a little bit too tight. But what a way to cap off the season. Parker Anderson, a great year. And then capping it off with a Wasota 100 win. Congratulations to him. Now, there is only six possible point shows left in street stocks. This weekend, you got a pair of shows, the Autumn Classic over at the Casino Speedway, a pair of shows up in at Casino. A couple people to keep an eye on up there. I'm going to say Kyle Dykoff is extremely fast. I'm Justin Vogel sounds like he's going. Maria Brooksick, she knows how to get around that place. Andy Rosso, there, there's several fast cars that are going to be there in the streeters. And then up in Jamestown, they have a doubleheader for the 50th annual Jamestown Stock Car Stampede. Pretty tough at this point to bet against Johnny Carter, but Kyle Anderson's the guy that gets around that place well, too. So it's going to be between those two, in my opinion. And then Alton Sheridan, Friday and Saturday, they got a doubleheader. I'm not sure who's going to be there. I'm thinking all the Montana cars. I'm thinking Rob Petroff is due for a win. Kramer, um, he's fast, of course. you got Jeremy Castro. Maybe Murner is going to be there. I'm not sure. Uh, but they're, they got a stout field. Looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I think that Travis Schumacher is going to be there. He runs well also. The Red Cedar Speedway, they have Heats Friday feature Saturday for the Punky Manor Challenge of Champions. Now, you're going to have that whole Wisconsin contingent. Dustin Dowdy, of course, very fast. you got, you know, you got Andrew Hansen, Brower, Jeanette. I know Parker Anderson is going to go there. So, should be a stout field of cars over in Menominee. And then on Sunday... The Granite City Motor Park has a standalone show this Sunday. So I can see, uh, being that there's nothing else going on Sunday, I can see several of them going there because right now there's only a handful of points separating second, third, and fourth in the national standings. And uh, Parker Anderson has it pretty much locked up. But you got Vogel, Braden Brower, Ryan Satter. They're really tight there in the top three. And then the next three after that, you have Petroff, Mer, uh, Petrov, Craver, and Jeremy Castro. So tight battles all around. The, the national point lead is insurmountable. That's gone, but it's it's really, really tight from second to about seven. So let's get to it. The September 23rd edition of the BuyRayChurch.com One to Go Show <coughs> Street Stock Power Rankings at number 10. And there's about three or four that could be here. This one was really really close really close but i'm gonna give the slight nod to this guy so at number 10 rob petroff nothing went right at the one off nothing like he got there a day late he just couldn't get there from work and it just i think he had a steering wheel issue or some kind of an issue there like nothing went right but he's had a hell of a season he's tied for fifth in the national standings and, and uh, looking for him to have a back a bounce back win if I had to pick somebody to win at Sheridan, Petroff's going to win at least one of those. Mark my words. At number nine, Corey Craver. He also had a rough 100. Just did not go well. Solid season. And uh, he has one more win than Petroff. Petroff has 12 wins. Corey Craver has 13 wins. And I have him at number nine. And Corey Craver uh, 
very smooth watching him get around the racetrack. He's another guy that could be tough to beat. And this might be their last weekend out there. I don't know if them guys are coming to Madison or not. It's quite a, quite the haul, but uh, there's not much racing left going on out west. So we'll see how it goes this weekend. At number eight, Mike Jans, another guy surprisingly struggle at the 100. I mean, I, I was shocked as fast as he's been. I was shocked. and uh, But we're a week away from the Madtown Showdown. He's got to be one of the favorites. Now, the Madtown Showdown last year had like, I mean, it was like a who's who of street stock racing, and I'm sure it will be again this year. But Mike Jans is really, really tough in Madison. So mark my words, he's going to be somebody to contend with in a couple weeks. At number seven, Justin Bogle. Give him just a little bit of food on the track, and he is lights out. Take away that food, and he just seems to struggle just a little bit on that marbly stuff, especially impressive at the sites. Great run. I kind of had a – that's his forte. That's his kind of track, an elbows up feel. I expected to see that, and I expect to see him really fast over in Casino um, earlier this year. I watched him there. He gets around that place as well. At number six, Jeremy Castro. 15 wins on the year, had the liberty of meeting this guy and visiting, had a great time chatting with him at the 100 and tied for fifth right now in the national standings. I'm expecting to see him with that group over in Sheridan. You know, don't call out the 14. That arrow's been really good. At number five, Kyle Jeanette. Quietly impressive. I mean, the kid's always there. He's not flashy, but he's always there. Swept the East-West Clash out in Gillette. And had a strong fourth place finish. He looked really good at the Wasota 100. I expect to see him this weekend. Uh, one of the favorites to win the Punky Manor. Um, that's 16 X's. He's for real. At number four, Ryan Sapp. 18 wins and 40 starts is the second best win percentage in Wasota Street Stock action. For mostly running two nights a week, He's put together a hell of a season. Not quite the weekend he was looking for at the 100, which is kind of a common theme for a lot of these folks. I guess it is what it is. But uh, Saturn's been extremely solid. I expect, I'm not sure if he's going to Watertown or not. I haven't talked to him. I'm hoping to see him there. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll be over in Madison. Saturn, extremely fast. And I'm going to put him at number four. And at number three, and I'll tell you, this kid, is, this guy has been really, really good as of late. Johnny Carter. He rolled into Fergus on Friday, right? Just said, hey, uh, it is what it is. I had to work. I'm going to do what I can to make it in. He won the qualifier, put himself on the front row, and he got a solid third in the big show. He was there just a little bit off, and he's won four of his last six. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is my pick to win up at the 50th annual Jamestown Stock Car Stampede. Carter uh, kind of had a little bit of a dry spell through the middle, but Boy, if you look at the numbers, he might have maybe the most dominant, the strongest maybe last month and a half or so. He's been really, really good. And at number two, Braden Brower, another kid that's been really good. This kid's flat out talented, been fast all year, and uh, he's been up front basically all of September, which is tough. Second in Madison on a last lap pass, kind of a heartbreaker because he needed that win for some points. And then a solid second over at the Wasota 100. Same deal there. He led the lion's share of one of the qualifiers. Johnny Carter got by him. And if not for the holes, he might have had a little something for Parker Anderson. But I'm telling you, I just see constant improvement out of this kid all year long. And I'm not sure what his plans are for the 2022 season. But I'm telling you what, whatever he's in, he's going to win. He flat out knows how to drive a race car. And at number one, <coughs> Parker Anderson. 34 wins, step as Street Stock Tour champion, prelude to the Johnny winner, Wissota 100 winner. Basically, you might as well call it right now, you're Wissota national champion. What a year. Absolutely incredible year. And uh, I guess, you know, we've got a couple invitationals left. You got the Funky Matter. I'm sure he's going there. Is he going to win that too? Well, we'll find out. There's some pretty good, pretty good cars that might have a little something to say about it. But in the September 23rd edition of the BuyRayShirts.com One to Go Show Speed Stock Power Rankings, it's pretty obvious. Parker Anderson, number one.